welcome to a uh, special meeting of the Hadley School Committee, uh, June 9th, 2020. Um, can I get a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? We have currently have one presentation topic around uh, fiscal year 21 budget and staffing plan as well as uh, having that be followed by a public comment period. Um, Annie, are there any adjustments to the agenda for tonight? No, there are not. Okay. Let's move in then to um, topic 3A, which is the fiscal year 21 budget and staffing plan. So I just want to frame this by, um, we met last month and we were presented with a, you know, a, an initial dilemma after our first tri-board meeting, which I know we'll go through the timing of all of this, but we knew that we were gonna have to make some uh, challenging decisions in light of the situation with the town um, and their finances. And I'd like to thank, I know Jean uh, Nevin-Smith, I see you on the call and, and you are our newly uh, appointed um, liaison to the school committee, which we appreciate from the select board. Uh, but following, uh, following that tri-board meeting initially, we knew that we were going to have um, very tight budgets in terms of what we need to do moving forward with the schools. Um, in our last school committee meeting, we were presented with an item around um, the sixth grade class currently uh, being three classes with three um, full-time uh, employees uh, offering um, those sixth grade classes and having that sixth grade move into the middle school meant that we really had um, one FTE position that we weren't, um, that we were over essentially because we had staffed up sixth grade to meet the demands of that class size. And with that exiting, um, we had some discussions around whether we would need extra support in the middle school. Um, and so our decision at that time was around uh, that one FTE acknowledgement and really in line with what we've said um, all along around staffing to the needs uh, in terms of the population of the student body and knowing that we may need to adjust accordingly. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, I, I can tell you that, that that's a very hard decision to make, number one, and we never make that lightly, um, nor do we ever uh, necessarily think about who that might be. That's not really our, we're not making that decision. Um, but the uh, the part two to this is that following that meeting, having another meeting with the town, um, and hearing that the financial situation was even you know more dire uh, than we thought, and having to make some acknowledgments about funding um, through school choice, things like a technology article, trying to make some adjustments where we could, but then recognizing that you know what we don't know what the fall is going to hold we have really no idea of how to predict what the fall is going to hold and what we're going to need by way of support, coverage, FTE, um, capacity. We just don't know. So we wanted to come back together and talk about this um, as a committee with Annie, with the direction about um, contractually, what do we need to do versus knowing that we've got some unknowns here. <laughs> knowing that there are unknowns. I know it's an oxymoron, but it's true. Um, I would, it would be short-sighted of us to make a decision about an FTE now, not knowing what the fall may hold. So that's, that's uh, the framing for me. I'm gonna turn it over to, if anybody else from the committee wants to tee this up before Annie starts. I thought that was a good summary. Thanks, Heather. Okay, Annie, take it away, please. I know we have some information in the packet that we want to go through here sure. to ultimately come out with a, a resolution here. Sure. So as you mentioned, Heather, first of all, thank you everybody for being here and thank you for taking such an interest. Thank you to the staff for showing up and to the parents who have emailed um, and just been actively engaged with the schools and making their voices heard. I really appreciate that. I know the school committee does as well. I, sorry, I'm also trying to let people into the meeting. That's why I'm looking off to the side. So I'm paying attention to both. Um, so as uh, Heather pointed out, we know, we've known that we have three sixth grade classes that we would therefore, when those three sixth grade classes left, have an excess full-time equivalent 
or full-time position at Hadley Elementary School. We are required, I am required, to notify teachers who do not have professional teaching status and per the, the contract, I'm required to notify all teachers if there is the possibility that they may not have a job in the next school year, I must provide them with that notification by June 15th. Given the fact that we also knew that the town and in determining how that reduction in force affects, in determining how the reduction in force affects the faculty, so who's affected by a reduction in force, a teacher with professional teaching status, and this is contractual, statutory, a teacher with professional teaching status has bumping rights. So a teacher who has professional teaching status by contract, it's a right they deserve and a right that they've earned, they have bumping rights. So that means if their assignment is eliminated, they have bumping rights. They are required to be placed in a position for which they would be most qualified. And they can bump someone without professional teaching status. If we were facing a reduction in force so deep, as is the case with many districts in Massachusetts right now, where just every single teacher without professional teaching status has been pink slipped already. Uh, if we were facing cuts so deep that we needed to cut even more, then we take into consideration seniority, but those rules for reduction in force only apply to teachers with professional teaching status. Seniority rules do not apply for teachers without professional teaching status, nor does the reduction in force language in the teaching contract or collective bargaining agreement. So we know that we had a teacher with professional teaching status whose position, the position that they currently held, would no longer exist. There are not three sixth grades next year. And a teacher then in that in that grade cohort, a teacher with professional teaching status has bumping rights. Now, some people could understandably say, well, couldn't, couldn't you just, couldn't you just keep someone? We really like, and, and I mean this sincerely, I, I care deeply about all of our staff. I genuinely like them I, to a person. Um, and so I too would love to absolutely just say, no matter what, there will never be a reduction in force and I wanna keep everybody and I wanna make that promise no matter what. But as Heather pointed out, the town of Hadley is actually facing about a $1.5 million deficit going into fiscal year 20. There are departments in town that would like to be staffed up and they're not. I believe we have an all volunteer board of health. We have um, positions that have been requested in other departments, including public safety, and they've been told that they can't have those positions filled. So as much as initially, I'd love to always just say, we will never ever have reduction in force. I, I would struggle with um, making that case to the town. The town, as I have said many times, is extraordinarily generous to its schools. The town of Hadley funds its schools at over $2 million above what they're legally required to fund. They could cut the school department budget by $2 million. Certainly not suggesting that. Uh, they could do that, it's within their rights. They are extremely generous. And I never wanna take that generosity for granted. Most recently, uh, we had a tri-board meeting, which is the select board, the finance committee, and the school committee, representatives of the school committee. That meeting occurred last Wednesday on the 3rd, June 3rd. I, expected that there could be a possibility that the town could understandably say, we can't make this work, right? If we don't fund OPEB the way we wanna to fund to OPEB, it's gonna affect our bond rating. That's going to have long-term consequences. They could have at that meeting said, we actually need more of a cut. Like we can't vote on this recommended local contribution for the schools. We can't do it. School department has an increase going into next year in local contribution, the town's portion of about 1.7%. Um, that's not the case across all town departments. 
as I said before, this is a very generous town that supports public education. So the Finance Committee and the Select Board recommended the local contribution with that 1.69% increase to go to town meeting floor. It hasn't passed town meeting floor yet. We don't, have a, a, we don't have a budget passed until June 20th, assuming there's a quorum and it passes. But they kept that local contribution intact. I'll say again, the town really supports its schools. So that happened on Wednesday. On Thursday, and they passed a local contribution that was a budget that had already had a position eliminated because when the budget was initially given to the town in February, we had three sixth grades leaving. We knew we would have one less class at Hadley Elementary. On Thursday after that meeting, the commissioner provided us with guidance for summer programming. That's not guidance for the fall. We don't have that yet. When we get it, we'll convene the school committee. That will be a different meeting. But there's enough in the summer recommendations that one can make a compelling argument that if in fact, although the commissioner came out today and was crystal clear that fall guidance has not been published, even newspaper articles that are saying these are going to be the ratios and this is what's going to happen, commissioner was adamant today. All guidance isn't out. But a reasonable person could say, if this is the direction, then um, we could absolutely say that we will have staffing needs. Potentially, we will have needs at Hopkins. We will have needs at Hadley Elementary School. We will have district-wide needs. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like because we don't have the guidance yet telling us how the state expects students to come back to school. They said that guidance will be 85 to 90 or even 95% prescriptive. No idea how they're going to recommend students return. But we could very logically make the argument that to retain 100% of our staff would not be something we were just doing because we care deeply about people and, and we want all of our faculty. We could say, and we could say we're doing this because we can predict that there will be a need. The school committee and the HEA, which is the Education Association, or co people commonly say the union, um, the Education Association and the school committee have gone on record since the beginning of COVID, COVID with and our closure with statements of values that. They are committed to keeping employees economically whole to every extent possible. They at no point entertained layoffs prior to the end of the year for faculty. And certainly they're always committed to continuing to keep employees economically whole. But we also owe it to the town, to the entire town, or a department within the town to demonstrate that we are being as fiscally responsible as possible, particularly when we are blessed enough that we are in a town, two million above foundation. There's a town, just two towns to the west of us, east of us, excuse me. And um, they get local contribution and that's it. That's it. That's all the town has to do. So we now have information that one, the, the town has organized an FY21 budget that allows for the school department to have a 1.69% increase in local contribution. We have enough information that we can point to when other people who advocate for other departments very strongly and for good reasons say, <clears throat> well, why don't we just move some of that money from this department over to this department? We have guidance that we can point to that says, we can, we can assume that this is uh, indicative of what will happen in the fall and these needs are real. And we also are in a solid position with school choice. So an option that we have and the school committee gets to determine how much school choice they like to, sorry, just came in. The school committee gets to determine um, recommend the amount of school choice they'd like applied to the budget. Sit in my office. We have, we have a, um, 
oh, a wow. healthy, I'm sorry, Katie with Toets, you just joined us, but you're not muted. Um, we have a healthy school choice. Oh, there we go. We have a healthy school choice balance that we could potentially retain 100% of our staff, but that would require that we increase the app, how much school choice we're applying in the budget to uh, up to $854,334. That we originally had a budget in which we were offering, we were planning on applying $750,000 of school choice. Um, so that increase, you may be asking yourself, mm, that's over $100,000, that's more than a teacher. It is more than a teacher. We also, one of the reasons that we have school choice is to prepare for unanticipated expenses. We were notified last week of something called an LEA assignment. That means that the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has determined that a, a, there's a child who has a parent living in the town of Hadley and um, the tuition in an out of district placement for that child is uh, about $184,000. So the town is now responsible for 50% of that tuition um, plus transportation. So we also had to apply additional school choice to, to do that. And um, yeah, so we are in a position to retain 100% of our staff. If the school committee would be comfortable applying that much money to the budget um, and that maintains the local contribution that the town has already agreed to um, and would again maintain 100% of the staff. And I think that if asked by any other departments that we have a compelling and logical argument to support the retention of 100% of the staff. Thanks, Annie. Um, I do wanna to acknowledge too that Humera has joined us. Hey, Humera. Hi, Heather. Great, thanks. So I think the, the request really for us um, to determine and acknowledge, and we do need to vote on this because it impacts our budget, is um, this revisiting our discussion from the May 28th decision um, regarding a reduction of the 1.0 FTE uh, in light of what's, what Annie has outlined here, what I've um, introduced, the DESE guidance about the summer um, schooling and the final select board fiscal year 21 recommendation. Um, doing that would mean that we would need to increase the amount of school choice revenue applied um, to be a total of 854,334, mm -hmm. which is outlined in the updated fiscal year 21 budget summary um, and school choice projections that have, are part of our packet. So the outcome of this would be that we would not be making um, any uh, changes to the number of FTEs that we have. Uh, employed, we would be revisiting the decision from before regarding um, a reduction in force. And we would obviously be looking forward to guidance from uh, the commissioner on what the fall will look like. And I'm sure we'll be meeting again then, but this would at least put us in a um, secure position with the staff that we have while still being within policy um, of school choice funding um, and acknowledging uh, for the town that we're we're giving more from school choice um, that we have within our policy. And I'd just like to add, if I could, that the school committee will need to vote, if the school committee chooses this, this course of action, the school committee will actually have to vote on the FY21 budget and that total amount now, because the original vote uh, that you took was for an eight point eight million six hundred forty two thousand seven hundred and eighty eight. Um, for the FY21 budget, you would actually have to vote for an FY21 budget of 8,795,122, uh, which you have in your handouts. Um, and um, that's what you have to vote the budget amount is Got what it. the vote would need to be. Thanks, Annie. So Paul, Tara, Ethan, Humera. Yeah, so this is Paul, just to jump in, just a few questions. Seems like we've got a great crowd tonight, so I appreciate everybody coming to listen. I can't remember such a big crowd, so thank you. Um, can you, Annie, or, can you just give a quick overview of what school choice funds are, where they come from? And Heather, you had mentioned we'd set a 
school committee internal rule of how we were going to use that and maybe just reference that too. Sure. So school choice, every year the school committee votes to participate in school choice. It's a vote that they must take every single year. We, uh, the vote to participate means that we accept school choice applications of people coming to the district. A school committee never needs to vote on whether or not people have the option to school choice out of the district. For students who choose to come to Hadley Public Schools from another public school, the rate is $5,000 for each student that comes in from another uh, public school. If the student uh, receives special education services, those are also reimbursed through special education increment. That's always an important thing to point out because there have been times when people have erroneously believed that um, school choice did not make economic sense because um, there were students coming in who were quite expensive and uh, it just, it was costing the district rather than benefiting the district. We can clearly see that in the absence of school choice, uh, we would have had to reduce the budget by almost now, we're getting close to a million dollars. So that is the school choice program. Um, and currently, I believe that our school choice enrollment right now, I believe school choice in is 108. Although that is that the revenues and expenses on school choice are um, done to actual. So we have a, a final analysis at the end of the year, but I believe it is about 108. That is um, up significantly at the end of last year after graduating all choice seniors, that number was closer to 89. Um, so there's been a significant uptick this year, which is wonderful. You referenced the school committee does have a policy that says that they will always maintain in school choice um, an amount equivalent to the projected grant revenue, uh, which we have projected at uh, about $570,000. Some of those are entitlement grants, like what we get for special education, and some of those um, are no, actually, in this case, they're all entitlement. We don't complete. We don't include competitive grant awards in that because they are specific. A competitive grant award, for example, would be Innovation Pathways <laughs> Implementation Grant. Um, so that's the policy around that: is that that reserve must be there, and that's to deal with the fact of when grants dry up. For example, what's happening next year? We know that um, the grant that goes to the preschool program, which has gone down each year for the past three years. This year it was $30,000, next year it is zero. Um, so that's an example of why those choice reserves are there to make sure that we can cover a grant if the grant is, if the state ends the grant, takes the money back, that can happen in tough fiscal times. Um, if anything you haven't spent, the state could take right back. We also have school choice for the example that I just gave you that when there are um, unanticipated expenses, um, which can happen with tuitions, out of district tuitions, and those can be very expensive. I gave you the example of one that's $184,000, um, that when that happens mid-year, we don't wanna go back to the town and ask for money. So we make sure that we can cover those costs as they come up. Thanks, Annie. That's really helpful. I do have more sure. questions, but maybe I'll defer to my other school committee members before I ask. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, has there been any discussion or have you heard anything, Annie, about um, the impact of school choice around COVID? Are districts anticipating that there might be a decrease in school choicing out? Or I think I think some districts are anticipating that they may have a significant decrease in enrollment. It'll be interesting to see how comfortable parents feel with having their children return to school. And um, parents may make different decisions uh, based on how they feel about whether or not their child should be attending school in the fall. So it's really hard to predict. I don't have any prediction of I think the bigger question is um, how will parent and family perceptions of public health and um, 
how safe things are, how will those factor into whether or not students are coming back in the fall? That could affect not just choice, that could affect everything. Annie, I have a question of sure. that, uh, to, as a follow on to that. Um, you, I know you have a separate meeting devoted to what our, um, what our school choice numbers look like. Um, and if I recall correctly, these last few years, it's been on an upswing that Hadley has been attracting more students to our community than we've been mm -hmm. sending. It, and uh, is that correct? Do, can you recap? what that picture looks like now in this environment? I can. Um, so we have had an uptick and what I should have had available for me, although this is the upside to Zoom, I might be able to get it relatively quickly. Um, we have had an increase in school choice. Um, we saw a, a decrease, uh, sorry folks, uh, get this. We saw a, a kind of a prominent school choice because we had a large group of students come in from um, South Hadley in response to an incident in South Hadley several years ago. And, um, and when they graduated, there was a big drop in school choice. But we have consistently seen um, an increase in school choice in and a decrease in school choice out. So that has been the trend. And there are um, graphs and charts that show that in the budget book. The FY20 budget book is on uh, the district website. And I have it up right now. When well, I think seven, I'm thinking yeah. back to some of our past discussions, Humera, about marketing strategies and bringing students in and um, grant applications for programs and special initiatives. You know, I think we've realized some of that in those um, not seeing the, the um, out, you know, the mass exodus of ninth graders leaving to go somewhere else and bringing in folks that are um, looking for some of those specialized programs. We are positively trending. And, and the two new innovation programs, I imagine, will mm -hmm. be will continue to attract, um, which should help our school choice numbers. That is our hope. I think the biggest threat to choice right now is, is it's not about threat to choice as much as it is about threat to, in, it's threat to enrollment in general. And so now I do have the chart in front of me and the threat to enrollment in general is across the board because there is no way of knowing what the public health picture will be in September if all of the metrics that the state is, the Commonwealth is following right now in terms of public health, those continue to trend positively. That's wonderful. If people feel increasingly secure, we don't know what's on the horizon in terms of treatment um, for COVID and what we will learn. Also, the public health picture could change drastically to the negative. And so we don't know how parents will respond. And so it's a larger, not choice specific threat. But in a normal year, um, so we have seen, yeah, where we had a high in fiscal year 15, which is the 14-15 school year, of about 102 students choosing in. Um, and then uh, that, that stayed close to 100 the following year. There was a dip down, 82, 80, um, and then it's ticking back up. And now we're at 108. Um, and so since FY15, we have been higher than, it's kind of been these highest years and we're at the highest point right now. And at the highest point for choice out, that at its highest point was 63 um, students out. And at this point, I believe that that number is just under 50, but I can, again, the department will provide us with specific information about that in June. So Annie, what percentage would you say of our total enrollment is our school choice students. School choice students. Well, this is embarrassing that I need a calculator for it, but I'm going to use my phone and do it for you. And the mathematicians out there would be like, really? She had to do that with the calculator? Yeah, I do. Uh, it is roughly tw roughly 20% of our population. So roughly 108 out of roughly 540. 
So roughly 20% of the population. And um, and it's, it's also, and this goes back to the town, and I certainly don't want people to to, to hear, I mean, I can't control what, what anyone's perceptions are. So I hope people don't hear or interpret this as me being somebody who isn't out there advocating for and camping for our schools. Um, but I, I really, my point is that I do not want to ever take the support and generosity of this town for granted, ever. And because they are incredibly generous with the schools. I'll say that again. And of that 540 students, roughly, it's just over, it is fewer than 400 families, unique families, right? I wanna say, let's put it closer to maybe 350 unique families, maybe slightly less than that, but it's, it's, it's not, so you're talking under 400 unique families. And of the 108 choice students, I'm not quite sure how many families those represent, but you could do some rough estimates there and say, so you're just talking a couple hundred, a few hundred families who are gonna vote for budgets, who are gonna vote for an entire town that are, that are focused primarily on the schools, right? In the entire picture of a, of a town's budget. I think it's just important to keep that in mind and why it's so critical that anytime we make a request from the town, it is thoughtful, we've done research, um, and we can make a, a logical and compelling argument um, as to why these resources should be invested here as opposed to over here. Okay, so it's been a, a long day, so I'm going to ask for a, a brief recap mm -hmm. of, of what the what you're asking us to consider. I think what you're asking us to consider is that the one FTE that we agreed should be reduced because it was a fiscally responsible thing should still sh should should not come out of the town contribution, but we should instead take it out of our school choice dollars because we predict that we're gonna to need to spend a lot more related to uh, to gearing up for handling a, uh, a, a, a situation where we're schooling in, in COVID as well as this other expense. So are, are we saying, let's just take it out of school choice? Is that what I'm hearing or are we- So that's the background information, but what you're being asked to vote on very specifically is the school committee, in order to make that a reality, would need to vote to increase the FY21 operating budget to $8,795,122. In that vote is the understanding, which you do not need to vote separately because you see the revenue picture to get there, is that you are, you are agreeing to apply up to $854,334 uh, $854, of school choice funds as revenue toward that budget. And it, so implied in that, that get, retains 100% of the workforce. You just need to vote on the FY21 budget. Great. And, and, you know, I guess in principle, it also makes sense to me that we use the school choice dollars judiciously and uh, seeing it as a bridge uh, to, uh, you know, we don't know what the town's fiscal picture is going to look like. We don't know what our needs are going to be, but to use it as a bridge uh, to allow us to preserve 100% of our workforce, uh, that that seems to make sense to me. Um, and we also, you know, when we made this decision last month, we 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 didn't talk specific teachers. We didn't talk about, you know, what the um, what the consequences would be like, who would be impacted, impacted in particular. But I also, uh, in principle, really also like the idea of uh, leveraging school choice dollars to help contribute to the diversity of the faculty population. And one financial piece that I should also clarify for you folks, so just so you know, again, your vote is around the FY21 budget. 
But what that means is not only that school choice, but I also, because the increase in the budget, about $100,000, and I just laid out for you that we have been notified that we have a $100,000 bill uh, that we just found out about that we had to bring into FY21. Um, so I am also assuming that we are using 100% of CARES funding, the funding for COVID, in order to um, retain 100% of the workforce and address this unforeseen cost. That's also implied in that. Yeah. And so Annie, the, just to, in the packet, there's a description of a position. That is not our purview to vote on that position. No, you will need to vote on the job description. If So now we have what my estimation at this point in time, um, so this would be a separate vote, but, and this was a discussion that we had with our leadership team, which consists of teachers, building administration, director of special education, and myself. And the teachers are also uh, members of the Education Association. So we acknowledge that we, there's no way to know right now what exactly we will need. So in order to have the, the best we could do in thinking about what position we would probably need is the creation of a district-wide permanent, so every day, substitute position. This would be a unit A, so it's a union position. It would be a unit A position in the bargaining unit, subject to all the rights within the contract. Um, this, because it is a unit A position for which certification is required um, and a permanent full-time position, the person in the position, this would count toward professional teacher status if the person didn't currently have professional teaching status. What we can kind of estimate is that we know that also in your packet, you see just by way of example, we know that if ratios have to be very low, um, and who knows if the commissioner, what the commissioner is going to recommend in terms of scheduling, but if ratios have to be low, that we have to rethink where kids are and where adults are. So this position would be district-wide, could potentially um, be working with students at Hopkins, could be working with students at Hadley Elementary School. The requirements are Massachusetts DESE certification as a teacher and prior work experience as a uh, preferred uh, prior work experience as a teacher and special education certification, because we also know that um, the commissioner has indicated that we really need to be thinking about the students who need to return to school soonest and um, with the most degree of frequency, and those are students with disabilities. So approving the position would allow for um, me to post that and um, encourage, ask anybody whose current assignment doesn't exist to apply for the position. Anybody else could also apply for the position. Um, and um, the union has agreed, which I appreciate, to uh, there's posting timelines that they've agreed to waive. Um, and so that's what, that's what that job description is about. Uh, I like it. It's a, it, it seems to me like a very a creative way to, um, to allow you to have almost a floater so you can apply that educator to the place of greatest need uh, you know, in light of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, Humara. It, it kind of recognizes that we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And so let's not make any um, drastic changes here, but keep, you know, keep what we have and understand that we may need some flexibility with that kind of role um, because we don't know what, what the ratios are going to be, what the scenario is going to be this fall. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Annie, this is a one-year position. Correct. It is a one year position. Um, yeah. And it could be that it turns into more than that, but we don't, we, we don't even, we're not even clear what September is going to look like. So right now it's reasonable to say that given the current situation, this makes sense to actually say we would need this for next year. Um, beyond that, I don't know that we would need it, um, but we would have other needs potentially. Right. And so. Well, it is such an uncertain environment that, you know, planning for that uncertainty and giving ourselves a flexibility, we, we may need the current FTE in a different position or a different role. So to commit to something long term, um, 
as a permanent substitute, it, it makes sense to me that it is a one year position. Just knowing we might find ourselves in a similar difficult conversation next year, but I, I hear you, Humera, we can't predict. It's our, I can't predict next week, so I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have imagined that 2020 we were going to have? <laughs> Uh, Heather, uh, I you had asked early on in the meeting, are there any adjustments? I just realized you actually have two votes that you're going right. to need to take, the FY21 and approval of the job description. So a question for you, Annie, um, just protocol-wise, because I think, you know, you asked a number of questions, and I, I feel like I know where many of our heads are at on this. Um, do we want, are we able to vote on these adjustments to the budget and to the job description um, or do we need to move into public comment first? So um, we can, well, whatever, whatever you prefer, Heather. And um, I'm sorry, I'm just clarifying. Cause I'm, I'm, looking I'm sorry. Heather. And you need to, um, I'm going to have you vote. Uh, yeah, you need to vote the local budget amount. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Chris. Don't are we, you here? Don't we? He, I believe he is on the call. But don't we vote the yeah. school committee budget at the end of the year? No, it's um, it's that uh, the um, like the formal authorization of money into our account, isn't that later? Yeah. So you're going to vote the local. I'm sorry. We're going to have you vote the local budget amount and then authorize the use of school choice, um, uh, authorize the use of school choice up to the amount that is listed okay. for you, which is the 854, 334. So the local contribution, you'll vote it again, although it hasn't changed, you'll vote that local contribution amount and you'll vote the utilization of school choice of 854,000, uh, three, three, four, up to that amount. Okay, I see that. And mm -hmm. the local contribution is local uh, revenues amended. The town's portion, yeah. Yes, eight, seven, nine, five, one, twenty. No, sorry, the local is the town's portion, seven, three, seven, zero, eight, zero, one. Got the it. Local so contribution, what the town of Hadley. Okay, yeah. I see it. I was reading the wrong yellow line. You a motion. Is there a motion then to amend our budget with the updated local contribution of $7,370,801, sorry, um, with authorizing the use of school choice funds up to 854,334 in order to retain our um, current FTE numbers? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We also need to um, vote on the job description. Motion to approve the job description for the permanent substitute teacher for one year. Is there a second? Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to now move into public comment. And I would first want to um, apologize for, Paul said it best. Uh, this is great to see everyone here. I'm sorry I didn't open up with that comment. I moved right into business because I just, just it's been a long day. Um, but it's great. I see there's 45 participants on here, including um, all of us. And I want to acknowledge that um, we received a number of communications, a number of emails and letters that were so heartfelt. Um, they just, you know, I read them and I thought, you know what, this is one of the many reasons why I love this town. I love these schools. I love the experience that my son has had in these schools and the things, the stories that you laid out in your communications to us just made me think about, you know, my son's days in Hadley kindergarten in the, the preschool, in the, the caring and the activities. And I see some of those teachers on this call here. So I just want to thank you all for um, reaching out to us, for um, expressing your views, expressing your experiences, and sharing that with us because um, it's very personal and it means a lot for us to hear that and it has affected us. So I want to thank you all for that. Um, 
I want to give the other members of a committee a chance to also, you know, just open up their thoughts on this and then I'll go through public comment. Um, so before I turn it over to the rest of the committee, if you would like to make a public comment, I'm going to ask that you raise your digital hand uh, so I can call on you. Um, you should see it as a function in uh, Zoom, but beneath the participants panel is a little blue raise hand for me. Um, if I don't get to call on you and you still want to um, participate in public comment, I'll make sure to circle back at the end. But um, before I open that up, let me just ask the rest of the committee if you'd like to say anything. Um, I would um, appreciate the opportunity to say something, Heather. Um, I just uh, want to express um, how important the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion are to um, me personally, and I believe also to my school committee peers and the administration. Um, I know now uh, more than ever, we ask ourselves, what are we doing? What are we really doing? How are we um, leading? How are we living our own lives? How, what example are we setting for our children? And, um, I want you to know that we too are asking ourselves that same thing. And you may not see day to day what is going on and what each member of our staff and administration are facing, but I want you to know that they have my complete um, support um, for um, making the right choices, always having all students in mind, um, taking a restorative justice approach, which is something that I knew nothing about until um, my friend Annie joined uh, the team. But um, I, I really do believe that um, students from all walks need the same love and attention and care so that we can make them all better human beings. And um, so I'm proud of our community and um, Thank you for your advocacy on, on the various uh, issues that you've reached out to us about. Thank you, Humera. I just want to say something too, real quick. Um, you know, despite the school committee being a small group that makes decisions that are often not easy to make, um, I think it's really, really important that the community gets involved in any way possible and make their voices heard. So I'm really proud to be part of this community that took the time to reach out to school committee and administration to share their concerns and share their views because it's important to have everybody's voices because it helps um, it helps us shape decisions that we make if we can make decisions that are not only uh, fiscally and financially responsible for the town, but are considerate of as many people in the town as we can and, and the school community itself. So thank you. Thanks, Tara. We've talked about the administration as well, and we've heard from Annie, but we also have Principal Dowd on the line too. If um, you, I know we've been talking about this. Uh, did you have a comment that you wanted to be sure to share here? Yes, thank you very much um, for letting me speak. Um, before public comment starts, I would like to thank everybody who attended this meeting. It just speaks to the commitment of this community. Um, the one thing that I've, I've really recognized in just my short two years here at Hadley Elementary School, although it, it feels a little bit longer, especially in June, um, is that we are so committed to having this approach of equality and we want to be a welcoming school. We want to be a warm school. We want to include everyone. Um, we make decisions that are based on the best interests of our students always. Students come first. Um, I've said that over and over again. And to have the support of Dr. McKenzie and the support of the committee to really be thoughtful about next steps for our future when it is so uncertain and we don't know what to expect. Um, but to have that support is just overwhelmingly um, it just makes me so proud to be a part of this school community. And I encourage the people who are attending this meeting today to keep coming to meetings because 
as much thought goes into staffing, it there is as much thought that goes into everything that we do based for our students, curriculum, our budgets. Um, you, you folks have worked tirelessly around making hard decisions to make sure that we have a wonderful community, a wonderful school, and that we make decisions that are equally, um, we talk about our emotional health, but also our financial health. A lot of that goes into the decisions that you guys um, choose to help us with. And so I do encourage the staff that have attended here and the parents and the families that are attending um, this evening that you continue to do so, so that you can help us make sure that we make decisions that are going to benefit each and every one of our students. So I just wanted to say that, thank you very much. Thanks. Hey Heather, if I could just chime in, um, Jen, that's, you know, one thing too, to, to remind people, as, as Annie said, there's the town meeting June 20th, I, I believe it's gonna be outside at the Hopkins field. So mm -hmm. encourage you all to go out and vote. As, as Annie said, this, this uh, budget will be on the agenda. So we would really appreciate your support. Um, and just, you know, shout out to Jen and Annie for being so thoughtful and creative to find a path forward in these difficult times. Um, I think did a great presentation tonight, Annie, and the logic is very sound and very compelling. And I'll just say it's, it, it is, I think Tara said, heartwarming just to get these messages from you all. Um, it's, it's very touching. It's very meaningful. I have boys in high school, so I haven't engaged with the, the elementary <laughs> teachers lately. And my only question is, when can I meet this amazing uh, teacher? She sounds wonderful. So. It's just, you know, when you see someone that touches people's hearts so deeply and, and so it's such a cr cross spectrum of so many people, you realize, you know, there's something special there that you do what you can to, to hold on to. So We're blessed you. to have an amazing staff and the door is always oh, open, Paul. So yeah. please come and visit us. All right. We'll, we'll put you in a kindergarten classroom. <laughs> I can't come now, right? You tell me what I could go. No, right? not now, not now. <laughs> but soon, okay. hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. <laughs> Okay, I do have two requests for public comment, one from Jason Burns and one from Jane Nevin Smith. Um, I'm gonna move into public comment um, at this time. I'll start with Jason. Thank you. Um, as I just want to say thank you as president of the HEA. Um, we of course never want to entertain the idea that we may lose one of our colleagues. Um, we do appreciate the hard work and the hard choices that you guys have to make, um, but we also appreciate your willingness to revisit the topic um, and to make sure that everyone um, who is a part of our Hadley family remains whole moving forward. So um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. And thank you for the work that you do also as, as for the Hadley Educational Association, very much so. Um, okay, uh, Jane Nevin Smith. You'd like to remind us uh, about town meeting and some of the, the rules? Some of the, some of the logistics that go around trying to hold a meeting. We're not allowed, according to government, state government rules, to have an indoor meeting. Hence, we're meeting at the Hopkins Academy Field at 10 o'clock Saturday morning. We encourage everyone to bring their own lawn chair that we don't have to worry about sanitation issues. And everyone will be required to wear a mask. And you may need a little longer before the meeting starts at 10 in terms of signing in because we've never done this before. And we hope you will all come. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. I echo that. I know we're gonna need a good showing um, of town uh, residents for that meeting and to pass our, um, to have a, a valid vote. Okay, um, Tony, Lynn Morelli, you are next. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to echo the thoughts and thank Superintendent McKenzie and Principal Dowd and you, Heather, and the rest of the school committee, the leadership in general around this issue that uh, we, I think we really feel heard and that um, it's clear that a lot of creative thought was put into solving this problem in a way that seems like will be best for the Hadley Elementary community and actually, I guess, the whole district. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your comments. Annie, you have your yeah. hand. All right, I just, I have to say this because folks who go to school here and aren't privy to labor uh, management relations in other districts may not realize. So not only is this a community where the town works with the schools, there is an acrimony. People aren't asking why do those schools cost so much? It's a supportive town. And also um, just because, and I know it's in our hearts and we're not saying it, 
the um, Education Association has worked through this whole closure to step up to the leadership team, to be a part of, of making things go as smoothly as they could. And there are communities where the breakdown in labor management relations has created situations where students didn't get work for three weeks, four weeks. Um, so that doesn't happen. Creative problem solving never ever happens no, with by a superintendent or administration alone in the absence of a productive working relationship with labor and um, teachers who, and other staff as part of the association who show up and solve problems. You just, it's something parents may not realize that we are truly, truly blessed in that regard. Great, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to make public comment? I see no digital hands raised, but uh, I do just want to, again, thank the uh, number of participants that we have. Um, and just thank you for keeping the lines of communication open. We really do appreciate that um, very much so. Um, with that, I believe uh, we've already voted on our action items then. Um, so our last item is our regular meeting date, um, although I believe we have that set. You're muted, Annie. One day, one day, I'll learn how to do this when we all come back. Uh, so we don't have the guidance yet from the state, but I can, you can't expect an email from me tomorrow. I'm anticipating that it would actually be the week of the 22nd, but perhaps on um, Wednesday or Thursday, but I'll put some options out to the school committee. I just like to be able to discuss the guidance that comes from the commissioner with the committee. Um, and for the folks, so parents know, and our educators know this too, we are not, um, that is not going to be a meeting. We're just going to review the guidance. We will convene a, um, a, a team of folks to talk about how we implement and what makes the most sense. Um, and we will be inviting people to participate in that conversation with us. We're just gonna review it. So, and all that information will be posted. I will continue to do, not weekly, but newsletters throughout the summer and to notify you when there are school committee meetings um, so that people can feel free to participate and join us. Great, thank you, Annie. And um, yeah, we, just as you all kept the lines of communication open with us, we promise to do the same with you. Uh, so as soon as we see that guidance, uh, we'll schedule our meeting and get a chance to deliberate around that. So looking forward to that um, and what the fall will hold. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much, everyone. Thank Good you, night. Everyone. Yep. Thanks. Bye.